Praise be Jesus Christ. The face of our fathers and your mercy. I bring you warm greetings from the people of Canada. Why am I here? Why are you here? I hope these questions will lead us to appreciate more the essence of mercy and compassion. I being here means being conscious of the presence of God in my life as divine mercy. And you being here means you're being conscious of the presence of God in each other as fellow human beings. That is compassion. We have a little categorical moment for this. On bended knees, actually, we, we bend our knees. Our focus is Jesus on the cross. We can, uh, we can say we bend our knees. Our focus is Jesus on the cross. Okay? On the cross. And we have the horizontal and the vertical. Uh, parts of the cross. Of course, we know Jesus is the divine mercy. He is the sacrament of the mercy of God, the Father, to us. But then, if we say the horizontal part of the cross, that's our relationship to the Father. That's mercy. Relationship of Jesus, God the Father. We are saved by the mercy of God. And now, if we look at Jesus and the cross, we also remember the two criminals besides Jesus. And the hands of Jesus, God is standing, reaching out to the criminals. The vertical part is the compassion. That's why if we do the sign of the cross, we remember mercy and compassion. Mercy, our personal and intimate relationship with God. You and God, you and God. Compassion is our relationship with our people human beings. So now may I request you to, to please uh, put your hands at the top of the table. Please open it, both hands. As as you see your hands, you may say, this is me. Look at your hands. And now, look at your right hand. And then raise your right hand. And then make a sign of peace. So you see, this is very serious. Now look at me. With your hand at the top of the table, with your right hand in the side of this. This is a little look at like a little So your, your, your left hand, of course, you're holding the globe of the world. In the prayer of uh, uh, in Queen, we are in the world, the body of tears. But then, we are also the winner of peace, like Jesus. Now, uh, continue to put your, your left uh, hand open, and then with your right hand, and then this hand reach out the rings of the nursing uh, and, and, and feel the pulse, the pulse of your nervous system. And I'm feeling the pulse of your hand. I'm feeling the pulse of your hand. I'm feeling the pulse of your hand. 
in the first quarter of 2015, I have just celebrated my 10th year in the Presbyterian ministry. My bishop called my attention about a serious concern. That short meeting with him had a great impact on my being. Truth. The truth coming straight from my bishop made me feel the time stop. Silence. Silence was my companion, and yes, the presence of the Father in love and understanding of my bishop. Truth hurts, yet I embraced my wound and I sought for healing. I turned to the gates of Jesus. I needed to ask pardon and make reparation for my sins, or else, like a wound, it would be infected and can hurt others as well. I knew, though I confessed my sins over and over again, that I could escape from temporal punishment. It was so dreadful for me to think about it. This thing. Yet the grace of the Holy Year of Mercy and His plenary indulgences had changed everything. I realized that indeed, as Jesus said to St. Faustina and I quote, Let the greatest sinners place their trust in my mercy. They have the right before others to trust in the appease of my mercy. My daughter write about my mercy towards tormented souls. Souls that make an appeal to my mercy delight me. To such souls, I grant even more graces than they ask. I cannot punish even the greatest sinner if he makes an appeal to my compassion. But on the contrary, I justify him in my unfathomable and inscrutable mercy. Right, before I come as a just judge, I first open wide the door of my mercy. He who refuses to pass through the door of my mercy must pass through the door of my justice. Diary, Malcolm 11, 46. I have this uh, little catechetical moment for days. You know, if we do the instruction before baptism, with the parents. We try to uh, present sin as matcha, as a sin. But now, the emphasis is different. Sinfulness as a word. Sinfulness. Kung noon, para matcha, confess mo, mawawala yung matcha. But now, the emphasis is yung kasalanan parang sukat na pagtapos mo i-confess you have to keep, take care of it so that it will not be infected so that it will not hurt other people and the church as a community of course is a community of healing for us shame and sinfulness I found shame in sinfulness as a grace. Shame is our humble acceptance of our own sinfulness before God. Shame is our way of entrusting everything to God. Shame is recognizing that we are nothing and the days God is glorified. As Jesus said, and I quote, And even if the sins of souls were as dark as night, where the sinner turns to my mercy, he gives me the greatest praise and is the glory of my passion. Diary, Paragraph 378. I was so humble in the face of God because His mercy is greater than the entirety of me. When I was in Rome on February 9, 2016, a day before Ash Wednesday, Pope Francis met with all the missionaries of mercy in Sala Regia of the Apostolic Palace. And he shared with us his mind about shame. I quote, The Pope said, 
I would like to recall an aspect which is seldom mentioned, but which instead is determinant. Shame. Shame is an intimate feeling which influences our personal life and requires the confessor to assume an attitude of respect and encouragement. So often shame silences us. Gestures, gestures speak. From the very first pages, the Bible speaks of shame. After the sin of Adam and Eve, the sacred author immediately noted that the eyes of both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed thick leaves together and made themselves aprons. The first reaction of this shame is that of hiding themselves from God. There is also another passage of Genesis which strikes me, and it is the story of Noah. We all know it, but we rarely recall the episode in which he becomes drunk. In the Bible, Noah is considered a just man. Even though he is not without sin, his drunkenness helps us understand how weak even he was. To the point of falling, to the point of failing in his own dignity. A fact which scripture expresses with the image of nakedness. Two of his sons, however, take his garment and cover him so as to restore his fatherly dignity. This passage makes me think of how important our role is in the confessional. Before us is a person who is naked, and also a person is unable to speak and does not know what to say. With his weaknesses and his limitations, with the shame of being a sinner, who is often unable to express it, let us not forget, before us is not a sin, but a contrite sinner, a sinner who does not want to be like this, but who cannot help it. A person who is anxious to be heard and forgiven. A sinner who promises to no longer want to be separated from the Father's house and who, with the little strength he or she can muster, wants to wants do everything possible to live as a child of God. Thus we are not called to judge with a sense of superiority as if we were immune from sin. On the contrary, we are called to act like Shem and Japheth. Shem and Japheth, the sons of Noah, who took a garment to shield their father from shame. Being a confessor in accordance with the heart of Christ is the equivalent of shielding sinners with the garments of mercy so that they may no longer be ashamed and may recover the joy of their filial dignity and may also know where to find it. And of hope. The joy of being a child of God. Our joy is upon realizing that we are children of the Father and that our Father is merciful. We are called to be merciful like the Father. So the next question for me to answer is, so how I was chosen to be a missionary of mercy? Honestly, I do not know. It happened so quickly. I remember I was so depressed in August last year because of my woundedness and the feeling of shame. I opened my laptop and looked for some articles about divine mercy or inspiration. Then suddenly, the website of the Vatican about the extraordinary Jubilee of Mercy popped up. There was an application form for the Missionary of Mercy. I was moved to fill up the form, but it also asked for the endorsement letter of the bishop. Yes, I still submitted the application form, and instead of the endorsement of the letter of the bishop, I sent the picture of the CBCP Eche National Abicatical One Hostel. Two weeks after, the Vatican's Pontifical Council for Promoting New Evangelization emailed me, urgently asking for their, 
for the endorsement letter of my patient. In the last week of October 2015, the Pontifical Council for Promoting New Evangelization emailed our chancery with the message that I was chosen by the Holy Father to be one of the 100 missionaries of mercy and was expected to be in Rome for a meeting with the Pope on June and with a meeting with the Pope on February 9, 2016, prior to the commissioning on the next day, Ash Wednesday, at St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. Then, it all happened. I flew to Rome and stayed there for a month. I entered all the holy doors of the basilicas of St. Peter, St. Paul outside the walls, St. Mary Major, and St. John Lateran. I visited Milan and Assisi, and God was so gracious that He gave me a bonus. The God of mercy made it possible for me to visit my friends and relatives in Germany. My friends, the mercy of God brought me here to bring you the message, be merciful like the Father, and our church as a mother of the wounded. Our church as a mother of the wounded. Pope Francis describes the church as a field hospital. Treatment is given about all those who are wounded. A church that warms people's hearts with its closeness and nearness. It's in the paragraph 6 in the book of Pope Francis, The Name of God, Pope's Mercy. I think it's in the page 6. Pope Francis said, and I quote, Humanity is wounded, deeply wounded. Either it does not know how to cure its wounds, where it believes that it's not possible to cure them. And it's not a question of social ills or people wounded by poverty, social exclusion, or one of the many mysterious in Germany. Relativism wounds people too. All things seem equal. All things appear the same. Humanity needs mercy and compassion. He continued that the face of a church that does not reproach men for their fragility and their wounds, but treats them with the medicine of mercy. Here in the Philippines, we are on the planet knees. And our focus is Jesus at the cross. And the cross teaches us mercy and compassion. The extraordinary jubilee of mercy. St. Faustina wrote in her diary, and I quote, On one occasion, I heard these words, My daughter, tell the whole world about my inconceivable mercy. I desire that the feast of mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls, and especially for poor sinners. On that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. On that day, all the divine floodgates through which grace flows are open. Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as a scarlet. My mercy is so great that no mind, be he, be it of man or of angel, will be able to fathom it throughout all eternity. Everything that exceeds has come forth from the very depths of my most tender mercy. Even soul in its relation to me will contemplate my love and mercy throughout, throughout eternity. The feast of mercy emerged from my very depths of tenderness. It is my desire that it will be solemnly celebrated on the first day after Easter. Mankind will not have peace until it turns to the fount of my mercy. Diary, paragraph 699. 
and of God. Indeed, this one day celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday has been extended by Pope Francis in one whole year, the extra, extraordinary Jubilee year of mercy. Until November 20. I would like also to, to share my feelings about President Nicole. You know, he is so much wounded, molested, but he just lived when he was a boy. According to him. He is so much wounded. And we are trying to understand P U P A N G I N E. Oh, Francis, that is a family. But you know, a child that is so much wounded seek for his mother's comfort. When he walked on the dawn, he went to the tomb for his mother and he said, Mama, the family of me. Come to think of it. He said, the dead mother is asking for help. For our Holy Mother Church, the Mother of the Lord. And I am a Catholic Church member. And then we're trying to understand. Divine mercy is given to us as people power, but then we are asked for compassion. It's not an issue of uh, trying to bury the ex-president Marcos with the living and the yani. But please be reminded, it's a great scandal being a Catholic. Yet the body is not buried. One of the seven corporal groups of mercy is buried in the dead. Allow me, brothers and sisters, to end my sharing with the correct formula of praying that three of luck have been the hour of great mercy. Please join me on better things. You may not mean, but you may focus your eyes to Jesus on the cross, the mercy of compassion. You inspire Jesus, but the source of life comes forth for souls. And the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, and the love the whole world and empty yourself out of violence. O blood and water, which cast forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, may trust in you. O blood and water, which cast forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, may trust in you. O blood and water, which cast forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Jesus, King of mercy, I trust in you.